Thanks for waiting, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Zahra. Um, the work I'm presenting today is um, titled Choice of Implicit Signal Matters, Accounting for User Aspirations and Podcast Recommendations. This is a work that I did with my colleagues, Pervin, Ghazal, KD, Ben, and Monia, all in, tech, uh, all in Spotify as a part of Spotify research. Um, let's talk a bit about podcast content. Uh, podcast content has been growing significantly over the last few years specifically. We have right now more than 2 million shows and more than 64 million episodes that users can choose from to listen to. Uh, they usually use them for entertainment, relaxations, learning, or staying informed. There is growing number of users who are listening to uh, podcasts. So if you look at this right graph, there is more than 57% of Americans have uh, listened to podcasts in the past and more than 40% actually have listened to it in the last month. So it is definitely growing. We have a lot of content, a lot of users. So recommender system uh, become an important uh, aspect of it. Well, one thing that uh, I think we all in this session are aware of is that in personalization, we have this main assumption that we take user engagement with an item as a proxy for their interest and satisfaction. So usually we use these engagement signals, which are a lot of times um, in form of implicit, or some people call them explicit, but anyway, there are some engagement signals that we use uh, to train our models. There are, as um, in different, in previous papers was discussed, there are multiple of them um, in different, depending on the domain, for example, likes, streams, follows, comments, downloads, there are uh, basically a lot of items to choose from. Um, usually the common practice is that to take one specific day, like let's say streams or the minutes engaged with the content as your main um, so proxy for user satisfaction and try to optimize your model for that, optimize the recommender system for that. Or as we saw in other papers today, we take a bunch of these um, and try to do like mathematically a multi-objective optimization over a few of them and sometimes weight them towards one or another. Uh, but, um, but here, the, the main point of this paper is that this choice, um, basically this choice between the different implicit signals that we can use to train our uh, recommenders, what's the impact of that? What does it really mean in recommender systems? Specifically, we study this problem in podcast domain, where again, in like many other domains, we have different engagement signals to choose from. Specifically, in this work, we pick subscriptions or some uh, also called follows and plays um, of, um, or streams uh, as two main engagement signals. And we study how, how this choice can have effect on what our recommender systems will do. Uh, subscriptions in a podcast is usually like if you subscribe to a podcast, then you get to know about the different uh, episodes that are released and also um, uh, yeah, you get to know about the different um, episodes that are released and uh, play is that to just play episode from a stream from podcast, which happens a lot of times people just dip in in a podcast by listening to just one episode, for example. So we, we take this, uh, the podcast um, domain and try to answer three main research questions. Our first question is that how this choice of implicit signal for optimization can affect podcast recommendation and consumption patterns of the users. The second question is that what factors are really predictors of each engagement type? And the third question is uh, how do we optimize recommender systems to account for user goals that are captured across different engagement signals? Let's talk about the first research question. To study this, we actually uh, trained um, a rec two different uh, models, the same uh, structure, the same type of model. They were both multi-layer perceptron based uh, where you, you cast uh, recommendation as extreme uh, case of um, multi-class classification. And the only thing that was different between the two was if we train it on subscriptions or train it on plays. 
uh, we look at what you're seeing here is that in offline, um, basically the top 10 recommendations that were given based on each of these models, what are the category of them? So the main point of uh, here is that just this simple choice of what to train on can end up with really big differences in what we end up uh, recommending to the user in our top 10 recommendations. For example, when you're training on subscriptions, there's a lot more knowledge type of shows. There is less political current uh, event shows. Um, but when you're training on plays, there is uh, much more political current events. So there is, we see clear difference between the two. Uh, but this is offline. These are the top 10 recommendations. Now the next question is that, what does it really mean? Like, does it um, do we really have that much impact on users consumption as well? So that's why we did the second um, part of this study, which was just did a whole A-B test on uh, hundreds of thousands of users uh, and exposed the two models to uh, each cell. We see that both in exposure. Uh, so the question here is that people can really scroll down and not play to add to everything that you recommend to them, right? But what we see here is that in terms of consumption, and exposure, we see the same differences. So what you, you recommend to users will end up being what they consume. So we uh, so this impact is clear um, and we need to like take more considerations, uh, like be more intentful about what we are optimizing our recommenders for. Uh, the next question was that what factors are really uh, predictors of engage each engagement type? So the question here is that like, okay, we saw this difference, but what is it causing? Like why this is happening? How can we really like address this gap between the two? Um, again, uh, this was a gap we saw in the category of recommendations. So the only difference between the two models was really just the signal, right? And we looked into the, uh, just how often each implicit signal happen, like how likely is it for, an, um, for each of the categories to get those implicit signals? And we see the same trends. So it is uh, indeed like the root cause of like what we are seeing the difference there. So our next step was really trying to predict each of the engagement signals and see why, uh, like, can we predict if a show um, will get more follows or get plays and what are the, reasons, what are the features that would predict that? Uh, there are two main types of things that we consider here is that there is like availability related. So podcasts can have really um, different release cadence. For example, the news type of shows might be like released every day um, and their length could be different. Some episodes can be four hours and some like just five minutes. So we, we're wondering if these are like basically the underlying if difference that we are seeing. These are the uh, explanation behind what we are seeing and if this is really a, like a normalization problem. And the second type of features we use was content related. Basically uh, features that they were describing what is inside that each show, like what is, for example, a category of a show or its team. Specifically, we use manual annotations of top 500 shows in the US um, that account for more than 70% of in consumption in the US at the time. Um, uh, so in terms of the category, we had uh, knowledge, entertainment, sex and relationship and more. Episode length, we bucketed them to one to 15 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes, and um, all the way to more than 120 minutes. Episode cadence, uh, also bucketed by daily, more than once per day, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, or varied. If a, a podcast is serialized or not, if it's evergreen, topical, uh, or evergreen, like evergreen means that like a, basically a an episode of that show is always relevant and people would listen to it. Let's say educational shows are like that, but topical are uh, really depending on the day. Theme, themes could be learning, staying updated, companionship and sleep aid. These are manual annotations. Um, so the, our next step was using all these types of features, which were again, availability related and content related, try to predict each of these targets. The target is each of those implicit signals that we're using, which is predicting subscription, predicting plays, and we also added two more, which is predict, uh, predicting more than two episodes plays or more than seven days plays. One clear thing that came out of this was that category of a, a show has really like um, an important, um, uh, the highest coefficient in all of our analysis. So basically what content of that show is in terms of its category has a lot of 
um, that me, uh, has, has a lot to do with if that show will get followed, subscribed or played. Uh, the other and and things like cadence were not really as cadence and the length of his show were important, but they were not as important. Uh, here we next we were we wanted to just deep uh, like dive deeper into this. We excluded the category as like feature, and we were wondering what is the next one. Like it's kind of in a stepwise um, regression analysis, and we see that themes of, for example, learning is really. Um, predictive of more subscription than plays. So this is like what hinted us at this aspirational behavior of users when they are really uh, subscribing to a show rather than listening. So there is a lot of literature in like uh, in psychology that also talk about that, that I'm not bringing the, uh, here, but in the paper you can find more details. So the last analysis on this part was to kind of just do a stepwise analysis. Let's first kind of trying to control for cadence and length features. Let's do a regression analysis by first adding cadence and length features. And then after that, see if still category features are really uh, like there is, they are, they are explaining a high portion of variance for this model, which was the case. So we, our understanding is that this is not really a normalization issues. It's not that because something has, um, like uh, some shows are being uh, released more often or like they're longer. So that's not the main cause. There is some effect of that, but that's not the main thing. So if we want to really, um, uh, re, um, to, if we want to close this gap between the two signals we're seeing, we really need to take into account this category aspect of uh, the, uh, um, the category of aspects of a show. So in our third research question was, okay, so we saw this difference. We kind of saw what's the cause of it or what might be the cause and how can we really use both of these signals to optimize for um, our recommender system? So we wanted this model. Uh, so we used calibration, which is a really simple and explainable solution to this problem. And specifically, calibration is uh, by a paper from STEC, um, and it's used to really try to calibrate recommendations to reflect a user's uh, clusters of taste. Here, we are using it in a different uh, in a different part of like recommender system, which is trying to calibrate. A recommender system that's trained on one implicit signal by calibrating it towards another implicit signal. So what here we are doing is we are trying to do two objectives. One of them is this uh, score of a recommendation, which comes from when we are optimizing our models for the plays. And the second part is we are trying to minimize the divergence between the category distribution in recommendations list from the, the category distribution of the uh, user subscription list. So for example, if a user is really, user subscription list uh, reflects their interest in educational shows, we want to also reflect that into their final uh, recommendation list. So uh, the good thing about this uh, specific simple, so it is explainable, it is very simple and it's understandable. Um, there is a hyperparameter lambda as well that we can uh, move to see where in between these two objectives we want to stay. And we see that the effect of changing lambda on the accuracy for uh, subscriptions and accuracy for plays, we see interestingly, we were surprised that lambda 0.5 actually increases both of them both uh, subscriptions and uh, plays. And the effect of this change where it was seen by exactly what we were um, hypothesizing. Now we are, we are increasing the representation of knowledge shows uh, by doing this step and decreasing like political and current events in their uh, recommendation list. So the, to summarize here, uh, we wanted the main focus of this paper was just to show how much this choice of implicit signal matters. And uh, it will have impact on what is being recommended, what is being impressed, and what ends up actually being consuming by the users. Um, it has direct effect on users, creators, and ecosystem they are offered in. As we know, some cat show types can be really amplified in one in one case and uh, really um, not be shown in another case. We propose calibration uh, as a really explainable and informed approach to consolidate this difference. 
And at the end, uh, it's just something that to think about, like uh, specifically as we are moving towards optimizing our um, recommenders for long term, which is like a more of a hot spot, a hot area of research right now. This choice matters even more because it can actually uh, cause amplification recommendation through feedback loop and over time. That was my presentation. Uh, thanks for uh, your attention. Happy to answer questions. Thank you, Zahra, for a super interesting talk. Audience, please feel free to post questions in the chat if there is any question. Okay. Zenon, then, uh, <laughs> yeah, then there is a hand raised. Zenon, if you want to ask a question. Yeah, can I just speak, Zach? Um, yeah, so I'm wondering, I think it's a very interesting talk, and how do you think uh, what's the appropriate uh, lambda or to balance the uh, different metrics? I think you know, we talk about how that will matters to a user uh, engagement and uh, consumption, but how do we think about what is the right target to choose? That's a great question. I think uh, what I want, uh, my personal take uh, is that this is a product decision even sometimes so it's about you know a lot of these decisions we're making we are making it in, into, into a like a mathematical form and we talk about that that way but i think at the end what you want to show to the user partly is like definitely is what users is interested in but also like how to put that lambda there is engagement what is the engagement what type of engagement matters for your product do you think? And uh, how far do you want to reflect, let's say, users' aspirations or subscriptions into account? So I don't think that's a really mathematical question to me. It's more of a uh, user-based um, decision and product-based, if it makes sense. Yeah, 